So hello everyone, my name is Christopher Onchekwa. I'm an undergraduate Jewish student at UMass Boston, and I'm here to present the design and implementation of a multi-node OWC testbed for centralized configuration and adapting adaptation of system parameters using GNU's XML RPC and ZNQ modules. So the work we I'm presenting today is a combination of our past work we performed from the Air Force Research Lab for the Beyond 5G competition. And specifically, my role in the team was for the control and feedback research. Other members of the team performed the hardware characterization and the signal processing. And we're happy to announce that we were the first place team for the 2022 to 2023 Beyond 5G Student Challenge competition. And if anyone here is interested in participating in this competition, feel free to reach out to Tony Liza, Tony Liza at WBI. So I would highly recommend it as it provides very good hands on SRI. SRI tooling and very good extensive you know, work on GNU Radio. So motivation and background, optical, optical wireless communications. So we know that researchers are interested in OWC for the next SG. And we know that specifically researchers are looking for systems level research focus. And we know that experimental tools for system level research in OWC are needed. So why SDR for OWC? We know that SDR gives us the flexibility the rapid prototyping and the cost effectiveness. So you don't need to buy your traditional fixed function hardware black box. You can still simply configure your SDR tools and get ready and utilize them to your need. So why a multi-cell multi-user testbed? So some of the key things you wanted to highlight was that it provides the scalability, it provides the programmability, it provides the ability for centralized control, allows for automated testing, and specifically want to pay attention to the modularity the realism, so transferring work done in the simulation domain into real world application and the, and the repeatability of findings during research. And we hope that in the future we can enable dynamic and adaptive technologies for real world scenarios. So this is a project overview and architecture. So as part of work in the lab, we've established um, OWC, um, point to point OWC um, system so we have in this scenario what you can see in the figure we have a txa and rx1 so in the lab before we had a point-to-point -point con connection and over time we expanded it to accommodate more endpoints so we added a second um rx2 with another x series usap running gunner related as well and we accommodated for another led array which is our txp which we use for modulating the data stream from gunner radio and what we, what we want to enable with this testbed is that we want to be able to send modulated OFDM data streams over OWC, our OWC testbed. And we want to extend PI work to enable for multi-cell, multi-user resource allocation. And another thing we've done to improve our testbed is that we've added a control network. So in this control network, we use the testbed controller and we use Ethernet cabling to interlink all of the computers running GNU radio to the network switch. And then we, we've added the ability for centralized control for automated data collection and research in dynamic and adaptive WC networks. So background. So we know GNU radio is a free and open source toolkit for all WC and RF communications. Specifically in our testbed, we use GR OWC, which is a specialized extension within the GNU Radio framework for optical wireless communications. So it allows for out of tree blocks and allows for control and modulation of OWC systems. In addition, we employ Python scripting, and but we know that Python is a compiler's coding language that allows for powerful functionalities in conduction in GNU Radio. In terms of the hardware we're using in our testbed, for our, for our OWC front end, we're using the Etsys X Series USAP with LFTX and LFRX daughter boards. We have a photo sensor we employ in, as part of our testbed, and we use a consumer of the self LED array. And one thing to point out is that LED array is modulated by the signals sent out by the radio. And one of the benefits of the testbed is that the modularity of, allows for swapping between different auto receive front ends. So now I'm going to go over the testbed architecture. So one thing to pay attention in this testbed architecture picture that we employ a DC bias because we need to shift um, the AC signal from the USAP into the LEDs linear range as we use the LEDs for the intensity modulation. And then another thing we need to pay attention to that we perform optical conversion as we send the signals into the um, LED array, as you can see for the, um, for the TX LED arrays 
in the, in the photo. And from the receiving end, we use electrical conversion from the photo sensor to the USRP into the RS flow graphs in GNU radio. And then one thing we want to highlight is that remote control and feedback for a multi-node audio system is very useful. So one thing we need to pay attention to that XML RPC is very useful for parameter control. We know that XML RPC enables um, remote parameter control via server client interaction within Gurney Wave flow graphs. So this is just the XML server block. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. So all you have to do is simply configure the address you want to connect to. And within the Python script, you can call upon this XML server to update any relevant flow graph parameters you want. And then we use ZMQ for data retrieval. So we know that ZMQ facilitates real-time data retrieval and feedback values for adaptive control in OWC and R systems. So we know ZMQ follows a publisher subscriber communication protocol. And as you can see in the bar, we have a, a little photo of the ZMQ pub sync, which we employ in, the, in our test bed. So now I'm gonna go over the demonstrations we have. We have a couple of videos for you guys to look. And okay, I'm gonna play the first radio. I hope it's not too loud, okay? So over here, you can see that we have unique tones at each transmitter. So when I cover the RX1 and RX2, in the waterfall plot, we can see the signal drop off. When we cover um, the TX1 and TX2, we can still see the interference from the other LED as both the RX2 pick up, both the RX pick up the, the life on both of the LEDs. So, okay. So this is the same thing, however, we're adding modulated data at the transmitter. So I'm gonna play the video. So over here, we block RX1. We see the drop off in the waterfall plot. We block RX2. Again, we see the drop off in the waterfall plot. Once we cover TX1, we see the drop off, but we still observe the interference at RX1. And we see the same for RX2, the same interference pattern coming up. And once again, this is just like a more zoomed in photo of what's going on in the waterfall plot. So we see RX1 blockage, we see the drop off, we see RX2 blockage, we see the block, the, the drop off, we see the TX1 blockage, we can still see the interference pattern um, in between. Um, we can still see the interference pattern over here too. And we see the TX2 blockage again, once again, we see the interference pattern. So another thing to point out is the reduced noise floor is because once the TX1 drops, we still have a little bit of interference from the, from the DC power of the LED. So that's just another thing to observe. And in, as you can see, in both TX1 and TX2 blockage, the interference signal is still present. Next, we want to highlight how we use XML and ZMQ in Gurney Radio. So I'm going to play this video. So it's, it might be quite hard to see on the waterfall plots. However, we're using XML RPC to remotely, from a central computer, adjust the flow graph variables. So we're basically disabling both the T, um, TX, TX1 and TX2, and we're also enabling both um, the RX1 and RX2. And as you can see, the relevant drop off in the waterfall plot. And once again, in this scenario, ZMQ is used to retrieve the power. So we have a ZMQ pub sync that basically brings in, logs the power readings from the flow graphs, and all of that is available in our Python script. And once again, this is a multi-cell data transmission. So we're doing resource allocation across OWC cells. Yeah, um, I'm gonna play it back for you guys one more time. I don't think the audio came out properly. So as you can see, we rotate the photo sensor. And as we rotate, we observe the change in the audio file. There we go, perfect. And uh, once again, we're gonna show um, this demo, and this is basically when we use XML RPC to, from a central computer, configure the sub the OWC subcarrier assignment. So this is all done remotely from a a, sec, a third control computer. 
and we're using XML RPC to configure everything. So we didn't use any of the Qt GUI or anything. So we just simply hit play in our control script in Python and you should observe the changes. You can also observe in the waterfall plot how the different subcarriers are changing. And perfect. Okay. So outcomes. So we enabled a dynamic DC bias or optical wireless OFDM multi-node testbed with a remote, remote, remote control and feedback. We demonstrated a two-channel DECO FDMA link with dynamic subcarrier assignment. We demonstrated remote subcarrier assignment via XML RPC from a centralized computer. We demonstrated power retrieval and full graph feedback via ZMQ from a centralized computer. We hope that this open source contribution will help aid researchers for OWC research and the repositories for all the relevant flow graphs and scripts can be found at this link. And another complementary repository, which contains SDR tutorials for GNU Radio, and also performing packet error rates with XML RPC and ZNQ, and again, within GNU Radio can be found at this link. And yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, one sec, was Boyel here as the next speaker? Can I? Oh, there you are. Per perfect. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you're around. We do have time for a question. Um, any any questions for our speaker? Okay, Marcus has a question. <laughs> Hey, thanks for the great talk. Um, OFDM is kind of, you know, you mentioned that you have a DC bias to get your diode into the linear range, and OFDM is very sensitive to non-linearities. Like, is this a problem on the receiver side? Sorry. So, as part of the the work we did for the Air Force Research Competition, so another team member performed the linear range and reception patterns of the photosensors. So we, we had to make sure the photosensors were within the linear range before we um, configured all of the flow graphs. So a lot of this stuff was done by another team member and we made sure every, like the whole testbed architecture aligned with each other. So the photosensor was, the, was in the, I'm, I'm stumbling upon myself. I lost my train of thought, my bad. But basically we had another team member who was responsible for the hardware characterization. And we, he did um, emission and reception patterns and made sure um, all of the testbed architecture was configured properly. We actually have a, a, a repository where you can find like the emission and reception patterns and all the data and the spreadsheets for everything I can refer you back to.